Hello, this is Vern, and if you feel strongly attached and even in love with a guy who you know is diminishing your confidence, damaging your self-worth, and ultimately hurting your chances for happiness, but you can't seem to get yourself to end it, my video today is going to show you how you can reclaim your sanity and cut your emotional attachment to him once and for all so you can start healing and attract the healthy and fulfilling love you want from the inside out starting today. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to BernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. There are very few things that are as sad and painful as being with someone and caring for someone and loving someone who is bad for you, who makes you feel worse who creates a sense of sadness or a sense of lack of confidence or diminishes you in some way. But you can't get yourself to end it, no matter how hard you try. So my goal today is to share with you a few ideas that can really help you to shift this around. I would love for you to start doing the love math. And the love math is a principle that says, imagine that you have on one side of the equation all the things, all the reasons, all the emotional, exciting situations with him that make you feel like you need to stay. Maybe the way he looks at you, maybe the chemistry you feel with him, maybe the way you make love, maybe the high level of intensity you feel when you fight. It's not good, but it makes you feel alive and it makes you feel like he cares about you. Think about anything that you feel with him that makes you feel attached and connected to him. Now on the other side of the paper, think about an equation where every time he diminishes you, every time he doesn't listen to you, every time you lose confidence as a result of a conversation you have with him, every time he gaslights you, every time he imposes his will upon you without focusing on your feelings, every time he tells you he doesn't know what the future holds, but he still wants you to stay. All the things that make you feel horrible, that make you doubt yourself, that make you understand in your heart that this is something toxic, put them on the right-hand side. You will have an equation that says something like this, plus five minus 15 equals, minus 10. I don't care how many things you have on the left-hand side. If you have more things, more experiences, more emotions that make you doubt yourself and feel horrible, you're in a negative love equation that needs to be shaken up. Now, before I go into my very specific steps of ending your attachment, I'd like to invite you, if you want to learn how to take the concepts of this video further that I can share with you in this few minutes, there's a first link on the description of this video right now. If you click on that and enter your name and email, you can start watching my free training that will share with you how you can embody these changes in your life instead of just in your mind. The first step, if you want to stop getting attached to someone who's not good for you, stop traveling to the future. Many of you right now are in a situation where the only reason you are telling yourself you need to stay is because things will get better someday in the future, once his workload diminishes, once he feels less pressure, once he can focus on this or that, he'll be in a position to offer me what I want. Now, whenever you tell yourself that the present situation sucks and if it were to stay like this, you would not maintain your relationship with them, but the future is uncertain and there's no specific guideposts other than your imagination and your hope for things to change, you need to recognize that you are projecting a fantasy instead of recognizing that he doesn't have the skills, the tools, or perhaps even the interest to create the change that will make the situation for you fulfilling. Step number two is you really need to stop calling this love. And here's what I mean. I understand that there's elements of love in your feelings for him, but if primarily this person in your life creates a feeling of worthlessness, anxiety, fear, pain, shame, then it may not be love, it may be trauma bonding, it may be attachment, it may be addiction. And it doesn't just mean addiction to him, it could be addiction to intensity. Whenever you tell yourself that the only reason I'm with them is because it feels so strong, it has to be love, no, there's many things that are painful and the opposite of love. But if you combine them with a feeling of attachment to someone, and if you combine them with a feeling of chemistry with someone, your brain will let you know that you love him so much. And if you recognize that there's elements of love, but there's elements of things that are incredibly toxic and painful, then it's gonna be easier for you to move forward because to move forward from a guy that you feel completely in love with is different than from a guy that you feel completely attached to. Step number three is start healing your brain. Imagine that you fall and hit a glass and you have a big gushing wound 
that won't close. So you go to the hospital, they clean it, they stitch you up, maybe there's 10, 20 stitches there, and you start the painful process of healing that. And imagine that as your wound is healing, you're going to buy some sandpaper and lime juice and chili and spread the chili and lime juice and then scratch your wound with sandpaper. That would open the wound, fill it with infection, and may, you may make it way worse than it was originally. This is the same thing that happens when you're in a place of pain and you're attempting to get better and get stronger and have the emotional capacity to leave someone, but you keep doing things that are hurtful for your brain. And some examples of things you can do are number one is movement. You don't have the luxury when you're going through a painful situation with someone that needs to end to not take 20 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes even a day to do something active that gets your brain functioning more optimally. When your brain is sad or your brain is depressed or your brain is full of anxiety, it's going to come up with different solutions than the ones you can come up with when you feel stronger. So the first thing you need to implement is a workout regimen that allows your brain to be fed with oxygen in such a way that you have the capacity to start healing and see things not as painful as you're seeing them right now. Number two thing you need to do is you need to create conscious breathing something powerful you can do, especially as you will feel anxiety as you go through the process of ending this relationship or better called relationship. You need to inhale to the count of four, hold for a second and exhale to the count of eight. In essence, you're going to exhale taking twice as long as what you took to inhale. This is going to allow your heart rate to slow down and your brain to be oxygenated and you your level of anxiety is going to radically diminish after maybe five to 10 of these sets. The last thing you want to do is nutrition. If you want to start healing your brain, you want to start at least by eliminating things that are hurting your brain. Anything that is sugar-based, especially artificial sugar, added sugar, is making your brain feel overwhelmed, similar to taking cocaine <laughs> to your brain. So if you want to move past and have the emotional capacity to not feel like you're falling off a 20-story building as you let go of this man, you need to give yourself some breathing space in your brain by eliminating the sugary stuff that you're ingesting that's making it so much harder to take control of your emotions. Number four is once you're feeding your body properly, you need to start feeding your mind with possibilities. So what I need you to do is start by watching things that make you feel excited. Start by reading things that make you feel healthy. Listen to the story of somebody who went to hell and back and was able to do it so you understand the essential things that can help you do the same thing. Curate lists of content that make you feel your best. Now, once you've done that, the next step is to start connecting with healthy humans. One of the biggest mistakes we make in relationships these days is to feel that one human being can be the replacement for an entire tribe. So especially if you're in a very painful, even an addictive situation, chances are you've separated yourself from your friends, from your family, from people who believe in you, and you're either surrounding by people who allow you to stay in your pain, or maybe you're only connecting with them. So by starting to create healthy connections with others, you will start replacing that feeling of codependence you have with them and feeling like you have a world of possibilities in front of you and at least some humans who believe in you and can see the best in you even when you can't see it. Number six is you need to stop contact one day at a time. When people go through recovery, they don't think about, I'm gonna stop drinking for the rest of my life. They say, I'm gonna stop drinking today. You can manage one day at a time. Every day you wake up and every day you say, you know what, today I will not contact him. Obviously you have a communication with them that allows you to end it. But once you made the decision, every single day you're gonna say, just for today, I'm not going to communicate with him. Just for today, I'm not gonna call him. Just for today, I'm not gonna hear from him. When you do that and you allow yourself even to have an accountability partner, a friend, someone who cares about you, every time you're about to call this person, call your friend instead and say, hey, I'm struggling, I'm about to call this guy, can you please help me? Yeah, and then they'll remind you the reasons why you ended things. They'll remind you of how you felt when you were at your worst. They'll remind you of the commitment you made to yourself and that may just be the thing that makes you move forward and not call him. The next step is crucial. You wanna make sure you block this person from your life if possible. Why? Because if you don't connect, but you have him on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and you're stalking him, then it's gonna be really hard for you to move forward. But if you block him 
from text messaging you, from calling you, you end your connection with them on social media, then it's gonna be a lot easier for you to take the steps of healing. Your heart will start feeling better one day at a time and you will wake up one day looking back at the caricature of where you are today, thanking yourself for taking the first steps you're learning right now. The last step I'll share with you is get help. If you're following the steps and you're finding it incredibly hard to do it, please get some help. There's therapy available, there's coaching available. Don't do this alone. The more you realize that you can't do life just on your own, the more you surround yourself with people who are healthy and can guide you, the faster you will get to where you wanna go. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful to you. If it is, I'm gonna ask you to click on the first link in the description so you can learn how to embody these principles beyond just your mind, in your heart and soul. If you enjoy this video, please click like and thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, so you can be notified of new episodes. And last but not least, if you've been at this for a while and you haven't been able to get what you want, you wanna find out if I can help you get there, make sure to click the second link on the description of this video where you and I can find out if we're fit to work together. And if we are, I can hold you by the hand, metaphorically speaking, until you get what you want. Thank you so much. As always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.